forever, man. It's very important because we were blessed with this thing called hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, within receiving that blessing, we have to remember to use it as a stepping stone. You know what I mean? To take you to the next level. Use it as a platform to, like, sort of like a springboard. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at all the greats, man. You look at these guys who are billionaires today, man. It's all from hip hop. Yeah. You can never get it twisted and act like we're bigger than the culture because none of us are bigger than the culture. This mm -hmm. is the foundation of a lot of great men, great successful black men who are able to become billionaires, but only if you make the right decisions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay if you want to buy a gift for your loved ones. If you want to buy your lady a bag or something to that degree, that's okay. But you got to invest your money. You know what I mean? You got to invest in the process of that, which is more important. Get some properties. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Get into the stock market. You know, invest in, in things that are going to bring you money. You don't want to get a bunch of liabilities. You know what I'm saying? So I can't knock brothers. They want to buy their girl a bag. I'm not knocking you. You know what I mean? Because, you know, a queen deserves to be treated like a queen and, and you know, pamper with nice gifts. But put that money away, man. Invest, man. Put it up for the kids, for the next generation. That's a fact. That's a fact. I hope y'all taking notes. Generational wealth has a very important attribute to have, especially in this day and age. Listen, man, I got to commend you because black love, man. <laughs> we, we, we still pushing black love, my brother. I love what you and Remy represent. I love mm -hmm. how y'all holding it down with the family. Thank I'm curious. During this you. pandemic, how did y'all relationship strengthen, you know, yeah. with, with everything going on, man? Because I know it's, there's been some turbulence with, with, with different relationships out here because of the pandemic. How were y'all able to push through? Yeah. Um, you, you know, normally before the pandemic happened, we were always ripping and running. You know what I'm saying? Every day is another mission, another goal to accomplish. So you don't realize how much time you actually spend apart. You don't realize that you haven't sat down and ate dinner mm. with your family, you know, at the table together, you know. And um, during the pandemic, we actually sat down as, as a family every day together and ate dinner. And even if my, my, my daughter's two years old and she doesn't allow us to eat without saying our grace. Mm. So anytime we start eating, she's like, no, no, amen, amen. And we're like, okay. You know what I'm saying? She actually does it two or three times. You know what I mean? I love but, um, it. Watch out, Nelson. Come right here. She, um, she makes us say our grace together. And um, sitting down, just doing simple things like that, you get to talk more and see what's on each, other, each other's minds. Because when, when my wife was away, there were a lot of things we couldn't do. Like, I couldn't physically touch her. I couldn't share mm -hmm. that, that with her. Even on a visit, they would tell me, put your hands on the table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I really couldn't touch her. And um, one of the only things we had was communication. Wow. We would talk so much, and we got to know each other a lot more through that period. So that was kind of a blessing in disguise also. And, um, you know, we still conducted business. We still did a lot of things that we had to do, you know, with her being incarcerated. And when we, when we would have a disagreement, we would take turns speaking. So while she's talking, I have to be quiet and vice versa. And... um that built our level of communication. And when she came home, we started ripping and running so much, we kind of lost track of those things. So during the pandemic, we went back to that. We went back to communicating. Mm -hmm. We went back to when we had a disagreement, take turns speaking. When she's speaking, I can't say nothing and vice versa. And when you do that, I promise you, bro, if you ever have a disagreement with your significant other, if you take the time out to listen to them talk, you will see where you was wrong at. Mm. You will say, damn, I didn't realize because sometimes you could be wrong and strong. Like, no, be adamant about it. I didn't do nothing wrong. But when you listen to the person speak, you realize, damn, I didn't know, you know, I made you feel that way. I didn't mean it. Then you can explain when it's your turn to talk. So to answer your question, during the pandemic, man, we got more time to exercise those type of things and um, just build our chemistry back. You know what I mean, just spending so much time together. I love that. I love that. I'm curious, man, because obviously this is the first time me and you really, really chopping. So right. I'm curious, like, how would you say, like, Remy pushed you? Obviously, we know as a man, but as a lyricist, because we know what she does on the mic. She gets busy. How did she push you to evolve as an artist? Definitely, man. That's a great question. Um, my wife pushed me in many ways because I've been in the studio so many times, right? And um, I've witnessed her with, sit there with her pen and her pad. She's just writing. She released it. And it's a hit. Like, I was there in the studio when she wrote Conceited. I was mm. there in the studio when she wrote 
um, various songs on her album. And I seen mm -hmm. her sit there with a pen. So it's one thing to see somebody write a rap that goes on a mixtape and it's cool and everybody love it. I tend to see somebody write a hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that inspired me, man, to say, you know what? Let me, let me not dumb it down, but let me make it a little bit more simple so they can digest it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm because my wife, she she's versatile. Like she can spit your head off and kill somebody in the booth, but she also knows how to put that formula together to make them hits. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just to be honest with you, man, you know, you listen to songs like Alphabetical Slaughter where I'm just going. Duh, 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 duh. Mm -hmm. but if, if you notice every now and then now, I kind of, you know what I mean? I give it to them more simple yeah. so, they can, so they can take it in. So that's one of the things my wife inspired me, man. You know, break the flow down a little bit. So they can, so they can, so everybody can relate to it. You, you know? dial it back a little bit, you di but it's still, <laughs> it's crazy. Even when you try to dial it back, it's still one at all. It just goes over the top. It goes <laughs> over the head. You know what I'm saying? Right, and, right. And, and, and that leads me to like my next question, man. I'm, obviously, we've seen what you were able to do with, with, with the Stereo Killer Challenge. What I love, man, and I feel like a lot of rappers like your age, they struggle to adapt. I think adaptability has been a struggle for a lot of artists. But you were able to cook up a challenge that went viral just like yeah. that. How important was it for you, or if that was even an intention, to cook a challenge to go viral the way it did? Man, I was just blessed with the fact that everybody liked it and it went viral. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never knew. Like, even with NBA Rhyme Scheme, like you mentioned when LeBron James posted it, like, I didn't plan that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just said, you know what? This year, man, I'm going to go hard. And I'm going to be consistent. And I've been blessed with the fact that the people are embracing it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The fact that it went viral is a plus for me. It's a blessing for me, man. But I can't even tell you. I can't even sit here and say, yo, I mixed this with that. And then that's how I went viral. This is the formula. Right. You know, some people, when they have success, they start doing that. And uh, to be honest with you, man, I just got, I, I don't want to say I got lucky, man, but the people embraced me, man. I got blessed, man. You know what I, I mean? That. I appreciate that. Listen. I always been a bar still matter. This is the question I've I've always asked my lyrical brothers. Obviously, bars absolutely matter in twenty twenty one. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, bars will always matter, man. You know, if if you look at let's look at basketball for example, an example, right? Mm -hmm. You go back to the Will Chamberlain era. You come up to the Michael Jordan era. You come up to Kobe Bryant era. Now you come up to the LeBron James era. Every era skills are always going to matter. Yes. You know what yes. I'm saying? It, it, it has nothing to do with the era. You know what I mean? And, and to be honest with you, I feel like people who kind of lack skills, they try to base it on era, era thing mm -hmm. or age thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to be able to, to be the one to tell them that, no, that's not a good enough excuse. Because mm -hmm. skills matter in every era. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, 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 the skill of it, it always has to exist. So mm -hmm. um, I think bars absolutely matter. But you know what it is? A pure lyricist is very rare. Mm. Um, with, with the great pure lyricist being rare the way it is, um, if, if, they were, if they were to dominate the commercialism of the game, a lot of people wouldn't have jobs. Mm. So the lyricist has to be downplayed and he can't make a song, he can't do this, he can't do that. Oh no, he's not that good, you know what I mean? Because lyricists are an extreme threat. Yeah. So a lot of people a lot of people downplay because everybody can't do it. Mm -hmm. If you analyze it, the greats, man, you can count them on your hand. You know what I mean? So I'm just being honest with you. Nobody don't get mad at me, man. I'm just I'm just telling the truth, you know? I love that. And you know what's crazy? And shout out to my brother Reason from TDE. Me and him were chopping it up. And I'm curious, who do you feel like in the new age has that lyrical DNA embedded in that code? Since it, it is very much far in between right now. Yeah, man. You know, like I said a little while ago, it's very rare when one of those guys come along. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's been too often. Um, Off top, man, somebody that I would, you know, there, there are a lot of brothers that have talent. I can't downplay mm -hmm. Even the guys who aren't lyricists, you know what I'm saying? I'm not downplaying what they do. They bring something to the table as well. I'm always happy to see young brothers come from the hood and be able to feed their families. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
But they're all, they're all lyricists out here, guys who carry the torch. You know what I'm saying? Um, J. Cole carries the torch. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Um, I love what Griselda is doing. Shout out to my guy, Conway. You know uh, what I mean? That you collab don't need with me. To tell you. Uh -huh. you don't need me to tell you them guys carry the torch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a small selection of brothers out there who, who carry that torch correctly. You know what I mean? And nobody can deny that. I love that. I love that. You know, I'd be remiss in bringing this up, man. You know, hip hop, I said it at the top right before you came in. Hip hop, you know, we obviously lost a transcendent artist. Music lost a transcendent artist in, in, in DMX, man. And I know you shared some really thoughtful tributes to him on your Instagram, man. What, how would you describe DMX's legacy and what are some memories you share with the dark man himself? Man, uh, I would describe DMX's legacy, man, as just saying, um, one that spoke for the have nots, man. Um, iconic, man. This this guy was this guy came from nothing and made himself, you know what I mean? Self on a self made level became larger than life. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember, man, I remember back when DMX first came out, the, the entire New York City was turning blood. The entire New York City was turning blood around that time, mm -hmm. and how they would, you know. Describe it was yo, you dog, you dog. That meant you was blood, and just so happened DMX came out with that song, "Where My Dogs At." Where my yo, dogs at? Classic. When I tell you the streets went fucking crazy every time that song came on, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I remember like around that time when he was like starting to come up and do his thing, and to me, from my perspective, that was how he kind of captured the streets because at, back then you had to make it in New York to make to really like make it and he had especially you know, that era yeah I, I i know dmx eventually went worldwide and did what he did mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, i can only speak for these new york streets and these brooklyn streets when that get at me dog ring off it was <laughs> type of energy in them streets man and everybody thought he was a blood and dmx just loved dogs you know what i'm saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's crazy so at that moment everybody gravitated towards him from the street you mm -hmm. know what i mean and from there he had them. Like, you had to fuck with X. You had to love X. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, on a personal level, man, every time I ever ran into that brother, man, it was just a teachable moment, a laugh, you know, a, enjoying laughter together. He's dropping jewels on you. Because I came up listening to X. So to, to, to actually finally meet him, and I'm trying to explain to him, like, yo, I came up listening to you. Yo, I respect your work. This is a brother who's, who's not cocky. He's telling me, nah, man, I respect what you're doing, dog. You know mm -hmm. and, and I wish you the best blessings in your career. He's giving it right back to me. Because it, it, I don't know if you remember, but the first re big record that i ever been on in my career, DMX Verse was right behind me. Ooh. Which was a touch of remix, man. I remember that. <laughs> that, energy, that energy was different. That's what I'm saying to you. So I got to feel what it was like to actually be on a record with DMX. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And his verse was right behind mine. You know what I mean? So... Man, like that record changed my life alone. Yeah. So you know, I, when I when I ran into him, man, I would I would just give respect to him, and he would give it back, and he would, like, in that brief time of us talking, he would drop jewels on me, man. And um, you know, I even remember at the Beyonce concert backstage, I actually put some of the pictures on my Instagram. Were you, were you Khaled? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. if, if you if you pay attention, you see me, you see Khaled, you see um, everybody standing around. And DMX just has the flow, and he's just telling stories and being entertained. Like he's just going in, and we all laughing, and we just had a good time, just chopping it up. And I remember the last time I seen him, it was actually a concert. It was a loud concert. Mm -hmm. Um, Loud Records did a concert. I'm gonna the reunion, the reunion concert. Yeah, yeah. And my wife was performing, and um, mm -hmm. and my wife DMX is one of her favorite people in the world. Like fuck, mm -hmm. right? like she, she loves DMX. You know what I'm saying? Like whenever. It's, they run into each other. They pray together, like all tight. Like he, he drops them jewels, and, and she, my wife, she loves X, man. And I remember seeing him at that concert, and you know, she's like, "Yo, you know what I mean? Let me take a picture with you." You know what I mean? And while they taking a the picture, X look over at me. He like, "Nah, dog, no, you getting this picture too, man?" <laughs> 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 that's 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 how X is again. <laughs> he like, nah, dog. Wow, my nigga Pat gotta get in this picture too. You know what I'm saying? I love so I, that. So that's the photo that you see on my wife's page when you see me, her, and X. You know what I mean? And um, we chopped it up a little while after that. And that was the last time I, I saw X, man. 
Wow. But every time I ever ran into him, man, he always wished me blessings. And um, you know what I mean? It encouraged me to keep doing what I'm doing. Let me know he recognized it. You know what I mean? And I, I, I gave him the same respect. Man, I love that you brought up, you know, X, because in the sense that people forget back in 98, it was Jay, it was Nas. This was after the uh, after Big's passing, and everybody was wondering who's going to take that crown, who's going to take that torch. And you got you got lyrical titans in a Jay and Nas, but then you had that energy of X. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And he just severed his way through the machine, man. Just own sound, don't sound like nobody. Never imitated, you know what I'm saying? Original, mm -hmm. um, man, street, authentic. You know what I'm saying? When one of them dudes, man, when he talking to you, he, he looking you square in your eye. You know what I'm saying? He not looking at the floor and shit. He not doing yeah. that head shit. Just to stand up. Some dudes you can tell off the rip who's the fraud and who's not. You know what I mean? Actually, right. just one of the dudes, man, when you shook his hand, you knew you was talking to a real one. You know what I mean? Just authentic, man. Not, nothing fake about him, man. And that's what I loved about him, man. Regardless of who may pass judgment on him or upon this and that, none of that matters, man, as long as your heart is in the right place. You know what I mean? And he was just one of those solid dudes, man. And a real spitter. Authentic mm -hmm. hip authentic hip They forgot he used to battle back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot what him and Hov did back right, in the day. Right, right. Authentic, man. Authentic hip-hop. No gimmicks. Man, I could go on and on about X, yeah. man. Just just one of those people who you, you come up listening to him and you meet him, you're not disappointed. Mm -hmm. You're not like, damn, I thought this guy was this and that. You know what I mean? He, he just He's everything you expect. Even when X is talking to you, it sounds like he's on the fucking record, like he's spinning the verse. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally like he's ready to go. Yeah, man. And, and, and just a spiritual brother, man, always wishing you well, wishing blessings, man, and I just feel like it happens to the wrong people. You know what I mean? I, I don't wish death upon nobody, but damn, it never happened to the motherfuckers who deserve it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they taking the real ones, man. But you know what? I got to say this, man. Before I let you go, I feel like, I, like I said, you're a bad boy. It's proven already as far as the wordplay is concerned. One of the best lyrical rappers we've seen. With you surprising me and telling me I'm done 2021, I got to finish the interview on this note, man. How would you... Describe your legacy in one word. One word. Man, one word. Oh, man. Um, I got to say, man, damn. I got to think about that. Well, you only give me one word. I'm, I'm a man of many words, man. <laughs> listen, listen. It got to be one, man. Well, I, I yeah. can switch up the question on you. I can switch up the question because I always ask people this at the end of the interview. So if you could pick one word to title this chapter in your life, what word would that be and why? Oh, man. I would definitely definitely say maturity. Why because maturity? I've, because I've matured, man, in so many ways. You know, to be honest with you, I, when I look back, man, I was very childish in the past. Mm. You know, when I should have been a more more adult, like, you know what I mean? Um, When I first came into the game, man, I had a mentality of, I was fresh fresh off the streets of Best Star Brooklyn. And unfortunately, I was a product of my environment and I had that mentality of my neighborhood. So in my mind, you know, if anybody get in the way of what I'm trying to achieve, as far as my career was concerned, I had to trample them. Mm -hmm. And you can't mix the streets with the industry. Mm -hmm. they're going to blackball you, you know what I'm saying? They're going to they gonna force you out the game. So I feel like now I've matured more, and I understand that you can't mix those two worlds together. It's two different places. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm family-orientated. I'm all about my children. I'm a father. So, you know, um, I'm a married man, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I've matured in so many different ways, man. I have so much more to offer to my children and, and to the world, you know what I mean, as, as a, um, a role model and a representative of black love, you know what I mean? So definitely, I would say maturity, man. I, I've matured in so many different ways, man. And, and, you know, I feel like all men should mature as you get older. We have to first acknowledge, you know what I mean, the mistakes we made and then um, grow up, man, you know? I love that. That's a mature answer within itself. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Not a problem, man. Listen, Pat, I'm glad we were able to do this, my brother. You have been on a rampage. You coming, <laughs> you coming, you coming out strong. First yes. quarter, man. If, if y'all didn't check already, make sure y'all go and support my brother dropping these two packs every month. He just yes. dropped a dope video with Khalifa. Is it worth it? With, uh, yes. Brady Bass. 
Yes. Make sure y'all show love and support, man. Any Anything you want to say to the fans before we sign off? Listen, man, man thank y'all for supporting me over the years, man. Um, I'm making my exit on this fi final journey this year. Follow me on this journey. I won't let you down. You can go to all digital platforms. Um, January is, is out now. February and March are all available. If you like it, purchase it. You know what I'm saying? Stream it. April coming soon, man. And thanks to you for having me, my brother. Thank you, y'all. One love, y'all. Peace. Peace.